Ja, boven in de keuken. In de keuken. Ja, maar dit is allemaal. Big update. We zijn nu in een terminal. Wat is dat? Oh, je hebt van Kino. Heb jij van een Kino gemaakt? Die van jou heb jij waar gemaakt? Dus ben je nu voor het eerst aan het doen? Nee, ja, ik heb ook En de kijkers zijn anoniem ook. Ja, is nu uh, is een link. Uh, dat ja, was ongeveer halverwege met YouTube. Uh, ik kijk voor jouw uh, QA's voor de Oké. Okay. <laughs> Grappig, hè? Ja, die vragen. Ja, ook, ook al die mensen over heel de wereld die gewoon. Ook gewoon veel technische vragen voor jou ook. Ja. Het is gewoon een community. Ja, zeker. Hoe kan ik dit nou zeggen? Die CPA's gaan Die best wel afvragen. Dat is Dat is We're on record. Ik heb het verder goed met die is die? Dat is een
Elfkijkers, kunnen jullie ons horen? Kan iemand even in de chat iets uh, bij de, de vragen? Goed te zien jullie, het is mijn camera. Ja, Marcus. This is not a uh, conf call, this is a show. Wie is dat? Ja, de hangouts. We hebben een hangouts waar kunnen we dat zien? Moet je even naar de Twitter kijken? Of Twitter kan de Brits. Kijk even naar Twitter van de Mix Apple. Er staat dus een link. We beginnen nu over een met mijn slaatjes. Ben je helemaal uitgebracht? Ik heb het zo bij Het is niet perfect, maar Geluid is nu goed. Ja, is goed toch? So uh, we're streaming this live. So uh, oh yeah, that's fine. This, but probably now they will hear us as well. So uh, thanks all for coming to the first uh, action phase of the 2016 of the. The, the things, uh, the things network, and um, yeah, um, we've seen already a couple of community members uh, having some use cases already today. So that's pretty cool. And in the next uh, 30 to 60 minutes, uh, Jan and I will give a little update on um, on what we'll be doing uh, in 2016, uh, and uh, and uh, mainly going to be a technical update. By Jan and the, the, the tech team, you know, what we're going to do. Um, so, just a little step back. This was June uh, last year when it was just an idea, a uh, mission to uh, create a decentralized open and crowdsourced network. Um, we launched it in Amsterdam, spread the story, uh, went viral across the world. Uh, and uh, we made a little big starter, which we finished successfully. And for for Don uh, and I, also like a, a part of the close community, it was a it was a really a really good time. Uh, the second half of last year, it was a, a project 
with uh, a lot of community members doing a lot of things. Uh, now we launched a community uh, website where communities can start uh, start their own their own Teams network initiatives. And I just got some screenshots from there. Um, people starting in Flavorland just recently. This one is really nice. This is a weather station. Uh, Thomas made uh, uh, during was Thomas. Oh yeah, thanks. <laughs> Thomas made it during the during the Christmas holidays, and it's it's actually connected to a crowdsourced weather data gathering system. It's called Wow World of Weather, right? Wow, Wow is Wow. Okay, I think I think it was World of Weather. It's really nice. Uh, we see uh, we saw somebody with a uh, with a, the, the the five euro. Um, uh, what's it called? Raspberry Pi zero. Raspberry Pi zero. Pi zero. Uh, and make a, a LoRa one module for that. Um, we did uh, three weeks ago. We did a global Q and A where we gathered um, uh, all the uh, international community members in a, in a uh, Google Hangouts Q and A. I think we were in these Hangouts with uh, around 200 people from uh, Mecca, from uh, uh, Uruguay, Buenos Aires, Sydney, uh, from all across the globe, which was really nice to see that. Yeah, all these small initiatives are starting uh, starting now to pop up uh, around the world, and then it's also it's not only just a first fling or a hype, but actually they're continuing in, in, in building a network and building prototypes. Um, yeah, so this is just a small summary of what's being done. And uh, so well, now we did this project, and we spent six months on it, and and um, I think we we did a great job. We set it up. Uh, and, and if you look at that, that, that you know, we had this challenge of showing that we could build this network for the community and actually that our process we validated and we validated it pretty good, I think, also because we, we managed to get a uh, thousand people around the world paying 300 euros for mm -hmm. a start bit, uh, which I think sort of shows some serious interest. Um, and uh, beyond this first half year of hype, of a lot of attention, I mean, we're on TV. We were on uh, on on every uh, like media you could imagine. And um, the, the challenge, uh, Johan and I see for 2016 beyond this high, beyond this nice story, is that we really make it a sustainable network. And um, uh, 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 what, what we believe is, is important for 2016. The only way that the network has reason is if there's be value created mm -hmm. on top of that network, and that can be. We make the lives of citizens better, or that we make more profits for businesses, or that we make uh, uh, cities smarter so that the government can, uh, the, the people that work there, do better jobs than uh, cleaning garbage cans that are not uh, full. So, um, so, so we really believe that the next step for 2016 is that we focus on the use cases and on the uh, applications. Uh, this is in the one little example we saw during the. Laura won uh, Alliance meetup. So this is a smart helmet. So when the, the brick hits the bottom builder, then uh, somebody gets a message. Like, I don't know, man down. I don't know. I think this is just a game. But uh, so this is uh, so that this is just an uh, example. Uh, and and what what we set as our mission for 2016 is that we want to guide. The IoT community and building these applications and making it really easy to, to do so. So um, one of the one of the first things uh, that, that we're we're going to do is make a cookbook, a cookbook with recipes and ingredients for making end-to-end -end solutions on the Laura One network. And uh, with a Kickstarter product package, we have this per perfect starting point to, to do that. But of course, there's there's a lot of other devices, a lot of other services. Uh, which, which which evolved in that platform as, as ingredients. And what we're working on right now is a, a extension of the Things Network where uh, we gather all the components that, that could be used for building a, a use case and then having a community part next to that where users can build their, uh, uh, where community members can build their use case and also share it with, uh, with the rest of the, of the world in the global community. And uh, so for us, it's like guiding the IT community, building the use cases, and, and making it easier and focus on, on developer friendliness 
and, uh, and that kind of uh, work. Um, and uh, we're going to attend a few uh, events, some big events. So we're <coughs> going to campus party. There's a hackathon of 5,000 students in the the Arab speech we are all going to stay for five days and we still be to the side of the Arab We're going to go to South West, South West. Uh, probably going to go to some very interesting announcements uh, there. That's in March. Uh, and one of the, yeah, for us, that's, that's, that's going to be a milestone where we can uh, also use uh, as an opportunity to develop PR and also make sure we, uh, we increase our international uh, international attraction. And, and then in, in, in May, we can go to the next round. <coughs> Hackathon, we're trying to evolve everybody as much as possible in these, uh, these uh, events. So just uh, a small, small summary of what we'll be focusing on with uh, with the Page Network uh, organization. Yeah? Oh, 2014. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> we built a time machine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, uh, so we're going to build a two of those, so the one that's right now, which is like the, the, the beta version of the network. Uh, Jonas is going to tell us about that. We're going to improve the community platform, so now you see a lot of communities <coughs> are, are popping, uh, popping up, and uh, yeah, this is a content management system which needs a lot of more features and, and, and so we can support the, the community initiators. Uh, the Kickstarter product, of course, we have to actually deliver, so that's going to be uh, consuming a lot of our time as well. And as I told, like the things that were cookbook, and um, yeah, a, 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 a complete uh, yeah, manual uh, uh, and a cookbook of recipes for building use cases and building um, the applications with all kinds of different uh, uh, components that you need for this, uh, this network. So, um, yeah, that, that's about it. Uh, we also um, uh, have an office right now, so we're in this building next to this. We're currently uh, starting off with a tech team, which uh, Johan's going to introduce. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's also a phase for us, and we took uh, December to, uh, to make sure that, um, that we, uh, uh, we also make sure that the organization is, is set up Probably, probably the bills are the fiscal, uh, fiscal and the administrative and the business, uh, business administration part of it uh, figured out. So, uh, so yeah, we're really in the transition of from a project to an organization an association, uh, and um, which will last probably uh, around January as well. So, uh, yeah, Johan, yeah, uh, it's going to tell <coughs> about the technical. Does <laughs> anybody have questions by the way for this part? Oh. All right, uh, thanks. So, uh, technical day of January. Um, there are always new people uh, who hasn't attended the previous technical update from November. Not. So, I have a basic introduction also of uh, the general idea. Uh, quickly, um, uh, hopefully, this is readable, this font size now. Okay. Um, so what I want to do is I want to go quickly through the, 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 the timeline, the time principles, uh, so what, what, what are we actually building and why and what are the most important things for us. Uh, also the core components and how they stick together and uh, the status. Uh, that is um, uh, then Matthias, is one of our uh, backend developers, is going to tell something about the progress of the uh, backend development. Uh, then Thomas is going to talk about the channel plan and the um, and fair access policy. And then finally, uh, we have Ilka that's our intern who introduces himself also. And we'll also do some research and development work. Uh, so, uh, what we did uh, in the last few months is um, well, first we started with the uh, development of the to, to make it uh, prove the technology uh, by developing a demonstration <coughs> backend. And that is still the backend that we use today. Uh, it still works, uh, sometimes precious, but um, I see a lot of uh, use, uh, a lot of traffic generated, uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, we are uh, in the progress of replacing that with our uh, 2.0, it's actually 1.0 implementation of the backend. Uh, so that's what we are currently working on. In the meantime, we gathered a lot of expert, expert feedback uh, to um, uh, to, to see and to hear what the community actually needs. 
And um, uh, yeah, so the design principles, I think the first one is very important. We want to be standard compliant. It means that we are uh, compatible with the lower one uh, specification. Uh, it's a distributed decentralized architecture. Uh, that's the, the ultimate goal. Um, then um, we have a, a different from, from most other lower networks is that it's a FICO cell layout. So that we, our network has a, more gateways than uh, only a few gateways on the whole. Um, then we do not have geographical borders, but we do have geographical separation to keep the data as close to the application as much as possible. Um, the routing, um, it's important to, to do that very efficiently. Uh, the packets are really small, but uh, still uh, there can be a lot of packets generated. So that's, that's a very important model, also the trust-based model, and we'll introduce that also uh, in a few slides. Um, and we support end to end encryption, and that means that the security keys that are required, that are used to encrypt the application payload on the node, uh, are only uh, known by the, um, uh, by the application developers or makers. Uh, so the, the routing components that I will introduce uh, in a minute, they will they don't need encryption keys, uh, so that uh, the process is just um, to take it. Uh, regarding security, um, security always with Internet of Things, when we say it's an open protocol, it's a radio protocol, all the gateways receive all the data, and the first question is, so how secure is it, what about privacy? Um, the LoRa one prescribes uh, using 128-bit uh, uh, AES encryption, uh, which is pretty strong. Um, it means that, yeah, you do see all the messages. They just go to the VR, you can just grab them, uh, but you are unable to encrypt them unless you have the right keys. Um, there is also, uh, uh, you can always with security, even though um, you use these security mechanisms, it's very important to keep your keys secret. So we also see a role for us to, um, to teach people, to tell people how to protect their keys and also to use different keys for every single node and not use your key for a thousand nodes and somebody finds your device and reads the memory and has the keys and things like that. Um, so we will also, it's not only the technical part, but we also come up with uh, guidelines to, uh, to, to develop secure applications. Um, so the core components, this is a, just a recap of uh, what we already uh, have been working on for the last few months. Uh, first, we have the gateways, and um, the gateway is, a, is, a, is a, the hardware device, as an antenna that receives the data, sends the data to the, to the nodes. And then we have the routers, and the gateway sends uh, data to a router, and the router is a, uh, is a cloud service. Um, the routers, they find based on the, um, the, the information uh, that is sent, typically the, the device address, uh, finds a broker, so there's some network discovery, uh, which broker is able to handle which uh, data. And from the broker, the data goes to an application handler. An application handler uh, acts on behalf of the application. It's the application handler that does the decryption of the data. So what we see as the core network components are basically primarily the router and the broker, and they only pass through the data. Uh, then there's a network controller, and that's a um, mandatory element in uh, Implementing the one uh, network, and the network controller is responsible for remaining in the node state, and frequency management, and, uh, and setting data rates for uh, for nodes. Uh, so the uh, how, how it sticks together sticks together is um, on the left you see uh, different gateways with their, um, with their range and uh, some nodes in between, and they send data to to. Um, uh, Gateways that pick up the signal can be two gateways at the same time. They send data to a router, and the router uh, finds a broker and communicates with the network controller. It's, it's the same domain as the broker. Uh, data goes to the handler, and from the handler, uh, applications can pick it up in any way they want. So it could be an existing cloud platform, uh, maybe, uh, um, for example, IBM Bluemix or um, uh, Fireware or uh, Amazon Web Services. Or or no graph is a very common, uh, easy to use um, application to handle Internet of Things data. 
Uh, but there's also what we are, our components and they are open source. They can also be used for private, private LoRa setups. Um, so that would be something like this, uh, where gateways send optionally data also to uh, routers and brokers and network control applications that are managed by a, by a company, a closed network. Uh, but they can also <coughs> offload data uh, that is not intended for this private network to the community and back. So if you, for example, have a company, commercial company, that wants to set up a, a private Dora network, um, they can use our components. And once they see, they receive data from nodes that are not for this company, they can send the data to uh, brokers um, operated by the community and, uh, and vice versa. Uh, so, regarding the integrations, uh, this is a question I get very often, so how do we actually get the data? Um, well, there are different approaches. Uh, you, there's not a single uh, cloud backend that we prescribe everybody to use. Uh, you can use anything you want. We, uh, we try to develop as much integrations as possible with existing cloud platforms. Uh, but you can also just get the raw data. And, um, <coughs> Get it from uh, from MQTT broker where you just log in and you have to take care of storage and everything yourself. Uh, but I think easiest for most people is just to shoot the data directly to to Bluemix or this and that or Parse.com to uh, to do further processing. Uh, so we defined six milestones. Um, the um, the first one is developing a uh, uh, like a fake gateway that is. Uh, Pretending as if it's a real gateway, so we have some, some test uh, environment to set up. Uh, then we started with the uplink process, just very simple from the node to up in the stream. Um, third one would be the, uh, is the, uh, the registration of applications. So we start to know uh, for which uh, application this, this packet was intended. Um, the fourth one is, uh, is a support for downlink. Um, then we have the fifth one is over the activation, that is a mechanism in NORA uh, that allows you to, to activate a device just based on their uh, unique ID in their application ID to the network. So it just says, hey, I'm a device, I want to join the network. And there's a mechanism to, uh, to enable this, it's over the activation. And then finally, there are some uh, <coughs> implementation of, uh, of advanced um, scenarios. Implementing the so-called uh, Mac connects of the, the Laura one and specification. Uh, great mark. Yeah, maybe it's been forgotten, but the uh, Boeing packet forwarder is already a fake gateway. I mean, if you switch all the, yeah. uh, the, 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 the radio streams and everything off, it runs on a simple computer and yeah. it's a fake gateway. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, once again, uh, if you go to Twitter and you compile that and you switch off and streams, you compile to fake gateway. The second remark is that there's also a fake node generator since August there that can, you can, you know, flood the, the gateway with the synthesized packages if you like. So, yeah. maybe you should add to your fake node to generate. Okay, thanks. So, uh, you can check out our uh, GitHub. Um, so regarding the, um, the code, what we have been developing is still in a private repository, but uh, it's going to be public uh, from next week. I will also announce that, and then the source code will be available. But uh, Rick just said it's already on our GitHub, so you can already find it there. Uh, so I'm going to give the floor to Matthias. Uh, he's going to do a very short uh, introduction about himself and uh, the progress of the different milestones. Okay, hi everyone. Um, yep. So I'm Elias. I'm a software engineer from France. And some of you probably already seen me on Slack or GitHub, hidden behind the door. Um, <laughs> I'm not going out often. Uh, so I'm working basically on the network itself, the actual network, trying to deal with the tech team. All different components you want to talk about. So, I I'm formerly working in a company here in in that building called Desmis, and since <coughs> December now I'm working with the Teams Network as full time as I can. I'm doing back and forth between two companies, 
but this is this is okay. Um, yeah, I'm following the project since maybe before the beginning uh, because I'm doing vintage from the, the Smith company, and yeah, so I'm just following the project from far, and I jumped in in December to really making to make contribution to the project. So as expected, there is a lot of work on different levels. So we have to write down specifications, documentation, to implement, to implement all the, the code itself, to test it, and then to ship it in order to execute it in the cloud and server, server which Hitler will talk you about a bit more, I guess. <coughs> so we defined six milestones. And so far, we, we are almost done with the first three milestones, which reflects the current prototype, current backend we get. So, the first three milestones, we will be able to route packets from the gateway into a handler. And a handler could be something like uh, just a database that stores the packet and can offer an API to reach the packet tag. So, the first milestone is about simulating and generating a fake traffic. This is not really important for you, but this will be important for us to test the network, to test the reliability of the network itself. And we need a um, gateway for that. So we can take gateway that uh, could be built in C, but as the network is built in Go, it's more convenient to work also with our simulators in Go. And we need as well to generate traffic from nodes, so to just simulate nodes emitting packets and emitting data from whatever <coughs> we want. Then this also takes care of all the protocols between the gateway and the network itself. In the second plan, we need to handle all the uplink transmission that is from the router to the network. So we need the packet to go from the router to the broker, then the broker to communicate with this network server to know if the packet should be handled or not, and then find the right handler to send the packet to. That part is almost done, and the figures are not, are not completely exact now because we are constantly working on it. The first milestone is about registering devices by personalization, which is part of the Lora one protocol, and basically means that you just Anchor directly your device address in your device, and then with your application in the cloud, you register <coughs> the network with that address. Tell the network, okay, this device and this packet from that device should be given to me. Should be given to me. And yes, so after those three parts, we will be able to replace the actual network, the current network, with the new version, which will be way more reliable and from which we could then develop the rest of the Aurora One specification. So the, the false milestone would be to handle the only packet. <coughs> you want to get the data from your node, you maybe want to reply to the node, send back some feedback from the application. So this would be quite a huge part as well. What did it do? Sorry. Um, and then we will have to handle the over the air activation because with uh, only the four, the first four milestone, we will only be able to manipulate devices that are registered with uh, a hard coded address in the device. But maybe you just want your device to go to the network by itself and to register itself with uh, an application ID, for instance. So, given an application ID, the network can just generate a device address for your device. Send it to the device, so the device can just communicate with the network. And at the end, you just encode your, your application API in the device. And at the very end, once we get the domain, the uplink, everything working, we will need to handle all NAC comments that are specified in the LoRa protocol to just manage and administrate the network. Which means we can just ask the device to send packets to a lower frequency, frequency or maybe to just send back a packet because we don't have the response or all the command we need 
we need them to be endowed, but this is this will be the very, very last milestone of the project because we need everything else before we go. And yeah. All right. So then um, um, we have uh, two other important topics uh, that we can finally um, uh, uh, present to you. Um, first one is channel plan, and second one is fair access policy. Um, I will leave the introduction and these topics up to Thomas, and uh, he will tell more about this. So, so far we have heard the good news now. Um, actually, both of these topics uh, deserve much more time than we have right now. We'll talk this in five or ten minutes. Uh, we will really do a follow up um, with more time, and there will be also post on the forum and there will be documentation. So, I'm going to cover this very quickly to get it out, and if there are questions, you can answer them afterwards, and there will be more documentation. First, the channel plan. Um, I'm not going to talk in detail about all the frequencies in here, but just to give you um, a bit of the reason. First of all, um, so what is the channel plan? The nodes you have in the network can send at multiple frequencies. And what we want is to spread them over several frequencies such that you get less collisions when nodes talk at the same time. Um, the 868 megahertz band is a uh, 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 license free band so everybody can transmit it that but it still has regulations so you have an, uh, you have rules about the duty cycles so how long can you send and the power you can send in the lower one specification there are three channels defined at a fixed frequency such that every operator every node has three fixed frequencies at least for Europe for this uh, example where you can make contact after you make contact the network can give the rest of the frequencies to the nodes or the nodes can set to provision them. But it's important, especially in the early phase, that all the gateways, all the nodes support the same channel. Is that if a node moves, it is not going to lose connectivity and it's, uh, it doesn't need to rejoin, uh, it doesn't need any wrong. So, of course, we have to fix three frequencies as defined, and then you have five frequencies left. Gateway can do a lot of five channels for lower. Um, there are various options on where you can, can put those. Um, a lot of other operators, uh, uh, probably uh, advised by companies like Electric like Utility, work in this direction. This is the traditional uh, 868 ISM band where uh, for a long time it's already uh, license free and there are lots of applications in there. Um, especially at this frequency, which is the only frequency where you can set more power. Um, everybody uses that. So if you put a spectrum analyzer, then you will see a lot of uh, trouble over here. So our plan, uh, also advised uh, by uh, people who uh, have a background in, it, in this, is to actually move in the other direction. So this part is only released two years ago for last <laughs> year. And there are not a whole lot of legacy operation, uh, uh, applications. There are no voice uh, 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 applications uh, sending continuously down. So we will define our other five channels over here, and it's very wide spectrum, and we have very good uh, connectivity. The only other one relevant for covering now is this one, because the gateway also needs to talk back to the nodes, and um, it can do that at either of these channels here, but also in the second transfer slot, it can do it at this frequency. And here, you can send it with more power. So we will use this channel. Only for the network to the nodes for the downlink. You have more power there, um, and uh, it's uh, also it allows for a higher duty cycle. So you can send 10% of the time in that channel, and that's very good for the gateway because just as the nodes, the gateway has to apply to the rules, which means don't uh, violate the duty cycle. There's much more to tell about this, and I will post things and publish it, but uh, we're going to stick to this. We've tested this on all the gateways that are in use and it works and all, all the nodes, so we know everything is compatible and no uh, node blocks there. The only thing is the curlings cannot send in this part of the spectrum, but that's not a problem because we can, we can use this one. Then this one is probably, probably more interesting for now. Um, a fair exit policy. So the, the network we built, everybody using it should have um, a reasonable 
uh, rate, success rate for the transmitted packets. Um, you see in a lot of advertisements like, oh, this gateway can do 60,000 nodes or 20,000 nodes, and that's true, but that's all based on assumptions. I mean, if a node sends once per year, you can do millions of nodes on one gateway. So the question is not how many nodes can do it, the question is what assumption is behind. No, the assumption between 60, 000, behind 60,000 nodes is that the nodes don't send a whole lot. So that's ignore those numbers. So we want a good connectivity for all the users, and um, if too many nodes are in single cell, uh, used by uh, service by a single gateway, um, at some point they start interfering. They start selling at the same frequency, and packets will get lost. So we need to keep the number of collisions acceptable. As I said before, this 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 band is uh, license free, but it's still regulated. So there are rules on the duty side. Um, most of the frequencies you can send one percent. But you can imagine, if all nodes send 1% of the time, your spectrum is very quickly filled. That's not thousands of nodes, that's very quickly filled. So, this is the background. We need to restrict in some way the access, because that's the part we share in the network. Um, as a base number, we said one. We should at least make sure every gateway can serve 1,000 nodes, just as a number. It's Hopefully, it's much higher, but this is the number we want to make guidelines for that we certainly can sustain. We also know that the duty cycle of the gateway should be lower than 10% in every That means the gateway should not be receiving more than 10% of the time something on every chain. If you go higher there, your collision rate goes up there. Also, uh, we have eight channels that can be used at all spread temperatures. If you make a calculation, you say, well, 1,000 nodes, eight frequencies, 10% usage maximum, actually preferably even lower. You know how many seconds you have from the gateway that can be used per day, you divide it by a thousand nodes, and you go to 30 seconds per day. So the rule will be every node can send 30 seconds per day. What you do with those 30 seconds is up to you. You can send them in a short interval, and you can spread them over the day, you can send them in very small packets, very large packets. But the 30 seconds per day is your limit. So the limit is not the number of packets. But in seconds, and it has to do with the fact that if you're further from the gateway, you send much slower, and uh, that takes much more time. It's unfair to, to compare that to somebody who's close to the gateway. This actually brings the duty cycle to less than five percent, and that's a very good number to start from a main scale system. In practice, because you still want to know how many messages is that. If we start with a ten byte packet load, which is not a lot, but also there is a lot you can do with ten bytes if you think about it a little bit. Um, you come to about 20 messages per day on the slowest rate, and you come to over 500, actually way over 500 messages at the fastest rate. So the nice thing about the 30 second rule is also that it has an incentive for people to send at the right rate. Because if you close the gateway and you can send fast, if you do that, you can send 500 messages per day. If you just fix your note at S12, you can send 20, which is not so good. If you have an application that requires a lot more bandwidth, LoRa is not it. It's not a streaming protocol. If you want to track your bike, we just had the discussion. If you want to track your bike every five meters, that's not lower, that's streaming data. <laughs> that's not going to work. So don't yeah, go somewhere else. <laughs> um, if we stick to this, uh, we have we come to our thousand nodes. Another very important uh, thing to remember is uh, LoRa is or a one is bidirectional, but it's not symmetrical. The downlink bandwidth is much lower than the uplink bandwidth. So you cannot send every message as a confirmed uplink because the gateway will not send back messages of every message you see. So simply it's not the bandwidth in the side of the bandwidth. So, uh, of course, you're going to send, there's so much more to talk about this topic and, and how to deal with this. But just to give you an example, you have 30 seconds. Now you need to start thinking, what can I do with those 30 seconds? So if I build my packet, like the first one, and I put this, I, I actually took this from, uh, from the API. Somebody has a nice counter, every packet has a counter in it, and then there's temperature and all the digits that probably the sensor doesn't give anyhow. Um, and 40 bytes, and if you do that, you can send at a high speed almost 300 messages per day. But then if you even just clean up your, your JSON, it's only 11 bytes, and you can send 480 packages per day. If you go a bit further, you think, well, it's Sending one value, I know it's the temperature. You just send value in ASCII and you get five bytes, 580. 
and then if you just send it as, a, <laughs> as an integer, you can send 650. So think about 30 seconds on what you can do with it. Uh, also, in, in, uh, for example, if you want to track something, if you're outside, you probably can send it at a faster rate. So uh, send every 10 minutes, for example, where you are at the highest rate. And if you're outside, okay, you as well see. If your bike is parked inside, you send once for three hours and update where you are. And that will also be received. Because you're inside, you're not moving anyhow, so you don't need the resolution. So there are lots of tricks you can do to actually make use of this, uh, of, uh, yeah, whatever is available. <laughs> All right. Thanks, uh, Thomas. Any questions? Uh, feel free to approach me. Uh, again, uh, there will be more documentation, uh, detailed documentation uh, on this topic because it's a very important topic, and there's a lot to say about this. Uh, but we will uh, publish it in, uh, also in, uh, in a more detailed presentation. <coughs> Uh, so finally, I would like to give the floor to my uh, personal intern, <laughs> and um, it's uh, Hilke, and he will tell something about his uh, R&D work that he's going to do for the Things Network. Right. Hi guys, hello. Um, I am Hilke. I just started working here at the Things Network uh, this Monday, so uh, <laughs> don't ask me any complicated questions because, well, for that you'll have to talk to the experts. Uh, about me, I'm a master's student. Um, depending on which university or organization you ask, I'm either an expert in cloud computing and services, uh, or distributed systems and services, or cloud infrastructures. So you already guessed it, I'm going to work on uh, scaling up the cloud infrastructure of the Things Network. And I'm going to focus on, uh, well, a lot of things, but mainly on uh, redundancy. Uh, we want to be able to just uh, kill an entire data center and still have network up and running. Uh, we have to be globally distributed because we have people using LoRaWAN everywhere uh, and they don't want high latencies between, well, the place where they are and our uh, data center here in Amsterdam. And of course it has to be scalable because uh, in the summer, in the summer 750 Kickstarter backers all plug in their uh, gateway and uh, yeah, let's see what happens then. So um, yeah, that was my short introduction. We're probably going to hear some more when I'm actually getting to do things. All right, very good. <laughs> so uh, finally, um, uh, almost to the end of this presentation, uh, we uh, want to just uh, go back to the teams that we have. Um, we still have four teams. We have um, we work in um, uh, this is not a very strict border group, but uh, we have four topics basically uh, that we work on uh, from the technical side, and we are always looking for community members to contribute. But also uh, we have internship positions. Um, so first we have the architecture part. Uh, we have network access, um, core development, so that's more like programming. Uh, and then, of course, the integration to, to get everything working together. I will publish this also uh, if you're interested or if you know anybody who's looking for an interesting internship, then, uh, contact, uh, contact us. Uh, so we have a forum. Uh, we uh, made our Slack public, so everybody can <coughs> join our Slack community. Uh, where, uh, there's a lot of uh, effective communication uh, with, uh, with everybody. Uh, we have a newsletter. We have a wiki. Uh, some, some background information that we will be continuously <coughs> improving. And then, of course, we have the source code on GitHub. Uh, next week, we will make the uh, core backend uh, repository public so everybody can read it. It's also documented already. Uh, and then, if you want to join one of these tech teams, then you can send me an email. So, uh, that was our presentations. Um, if there are any questions, uh, we have probably some time for that now. If they are very technical, then um, maybe you should come to me or Thomas later. But if there are any general questions, then you should. Well, I heard a lot of nice plans. If you just give the time schedule when things will be up and running. Yeah, so the, one of the, we, we have a few um, important events coming up. Uh, one is Link introduces uh, South by Southwest, where we were 
present the whole complete story, not only there, but also here, so that will be uh, mid-March. Um, the Kickstarters, uh, gateways, and notes, they will be shipped somewhere in June, July, at the latest. Um, and in the meantime, we are just building the, the, the network, and it will be also continuously improved. So we will be, we already have the demonstration backend up and running, so you can already plug in your notes and get the data. Uh, but all the functionality will be added over time. Uh, and I expect everything will be ready around May and June uh, when, uh, when things come together with the hardware and so forth. All right. Well then, thank you all for coming. Uh, we will stick around for, uh, for some more time. If you have any questions, come back. Thanks. Thanks.